tension is rising. Mark White was hoping for three points against Rochdale because the Wanderers have back-to-back -back away trips lined up. A long journey up to Hartlepool is preceded by this rematch as Dorking face their old playoff final foes for the first time since that fateful May afternoon. Ebbsfleet have come a long way since that day, winning the National League South at Acanta, and that feels like some kind of justice for a club that was relegated from the fifth tier on a points per game basis back in 2020. And with a chequered opening to the 23-24 season, including a recent 6-1 defeat at Altrincham, the fleet are relishing the opportunity to take on a side that broke their hearts two seasons prior. For that game, forever etched into the memories of Wanderers supporters far and wide, is one that Ebb's Fleet United would like to forget. One moment in particular that we'd prefer they didn't dwell on was when a bunch of amateurs attempted to give them the ball back for a free kick, only to accidentally knock it away, much to the irritation of Fleet manager Dennis Kutrebe. That foolish error may well have played a part in Fleet's mistrust of BOA, which understandably meant we were not able to go anywhere near the pitch for tonight's shoot, as we served a filming touchline ban, one that we fully and wholeheartedly accept. So we're keen to do the Fleet and their lovely ground justice, albeit from a distance. Okay, listen, so this is a league, this is a league that we're really serious about. It's a league we really think we can compete in, right? The fact of the matter is, and it, it earns you nothing today, it earns you nothing, but we've left 10 points on the table. That's a fact. We could be in the top fucking two, and I mean comfortably, right? That means fuck all, you could get beat 4-0 here. But what I'm saying is, I believe that in the club, we've got the players that we need and the experience after just one year to compete in this division. And what's been really impressive with the boys that have played recently is the intelligence shown towards the tactics, understanding what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it, playing the team game, not their own individual game, and getting things right, listening in this team talk and talking to their mates to make sure we get it right. Rochdale was tactically perfect, right? Halifax, tactically perfect. Oldham, borderline tactically perfect, right? Really professional tonight, okay? Because you've outworked everybody. You've outworked everybody recently, right? So we're gonna outwork them again, okay? Good stuff. Well, we're at Ebbsfleet, and Rich Fippen is on his one match uh, touchline ban due to, uh, which, which I think, I think we, we went guilty to, um, for kicking the ball around the playoff final, but to be honest, Rich, you'd have to do it again, wouldn't you, under pressure? That's the bottom line. I'd like you, mate. I'll never change. <laughs> exactly that. So, but you know what? We don't listen. We're, we're cool with that. They're good people here. Um, obviously, Ebbsfleet. Um, and uh, weird old game tonight. Both teams, well, actually not weird. We're in a really good place. Even though we've got like literally five changes and literally hundreds of injuries, like a whole, literally 11 injuries. Honestly, I can really feel the continuity with the mornings and the intelligence we're giving them uh, paying off. I think it'd be more difficult today. We've got boys, we've got boys in there like um, Kuehl, Kennedy, Cook, Briggs, they're not played. So we're going to have to really try and manage the game. Um, and it'll be tough. It will be tough tonight, but it's not season defining. Um, and um, for me, there's, there was no fluke about Halifax away from home, 1-0. Oldham, 1-0 that wasn't. There's, there's been no fluke in um, these much better performances. So I think we're in a much better place this year now than what we were last year at this time. First time we played Ebbsfleet since the playoff final. Expecting a bit of jip from the crowd today. Maybe, but I don't know. I, I'll say no and then there'll be some bloke going, you got your wife's jeans on? Um, <laughs> Right, which you tend to get every week. Um, and uh, they are actually trying to be funny. And I kind of sometimes think, actually, maybe it is funny, <laughs> right, you know? But um, I think in general, we get on well with most football fans, but obviously you get the odd knobhead who's misses his banging his best mate and he comes here to take his anger out on them. So I'm sure he might be here tonight, but keep an eye out. I've been an Ebbsfleet fan for five years. OK, what got you started? Um, basically, my friend just brought me down here one day and I fell in love with it straight away. Just thought I'd come along to the uh, 
grudge match with Dawkin after the final last season. Um, expecting a good game, expecting to see a few goals. I think both sides are good attacking, but leaking goals at the back at the moment. So, yeah, looking forward to that. I haven't done bad, I'd say. In my opinion, we haven't done bad, but definitely not been the greatest. Yeah, so are you finding life in the National League hard? I wouldn't say hard, but not as easy as we probably thought it would be. We're sort of in a rough patch at the moment. Uh, last couple of games, a couple of bad defeats, um, but overall I feel like we're going to survive in this league. So obviously we went on to have a very good season in the National League last year, National League South. Um, lost Christian and Gesson at the end of the season, brought in some midfield replacements. Um, started off fairly well, a bit inconsistent win-loss, but just seems to have gone downhill last few games. Um, hopefully it's just a blip. Um, we'll see what happens the rest of the season. Um, I just feel like after that we've Suffered, obviously, we suffered the big defeat, heartbreak at the last minute, but um, I feel like that gave our team a bit more confidence to spur on and give the fans what they really needed. The difference in the National League, I would say, is probably the physicalness of the, uh, the players, the bigger players in uh, most of the sides. Um, the fitness levels, I've really noticed. So, last season, we used to sort of uh, wait for the teams to wear out after 60 minutes and where we'd get the majority of our goals. Um, you, we don't get that this season. Every team, I think, is professional. I'm not sure, is Dawkin professional, fully professional? Kind of hybrid. Kind of hi hybrid. Yeah. But I think majority of them are fully professional. Yeah. That really notices. Yeah. Um, so I think where we was getting uh, some goals last season, we're not seeing quite the same results this time round. So when it's there to play, we'll play. That's what I'm saying. I think that's the message all night. No one's going to stop us playing football. We played loads of football Saturday, right? When it's there to play, we'll play, OK? But we'll put it on them heavily, first 10 minutes, OK? Heavily. Heavily, heavily, heavily. Okay, boys? I don't really want to say too much. I think we're playing well. I want the boys coming in, your first choice players here. So the bottom line is, let's have a great performance. Do me a favour. You know, there's no Tony Craig barking. Pybus is a good organiser. Who's going to take them roles tonight? Because that's what it takes. Who's going to organise? Right, boys, 90 minutes. Take your time. Be professional. Be class tonight. Be really professional. 90 minutes. I reckon we'll look a good side tonight. Okay, let's go. Come on. The coaches are all dedicated to figuring out the system that Ebb's feet are employing. They were mostly expecting a 3-5-2, possibly a 4-2-3-1 formation. And Mark intends to do the opposite of whatever Dennis Kutrieb has come up with. But we now know, having text a fleet player who has since joined Wanderers, that the home side are playing 3-5-2 in possession and 4-2-3-1 when they don't have the ball. And honestly, we're not sure if the coaches ever quite figure that one out. Looks like about looks like about a four, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, is there? This is left back here, isn't it? About four, double pivot. Double pivot with about four. Yeah, four two three one. There's a good shout, Jim. It's also worth us mentioning that due to past indiscretions, I wasn't allowed anywhere near the dugout. So expect some fan shots to be shoehorned in all over the course of this episode. Big two. Four, yeah? Four, two, three, one, yeah, by looks of it. Tell yeah. him to go to a three. Dan Gallagher is to move into midfield and Wanderers will play 3-5-2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eventually, the referee gives Mark something else to think about. To foul! To fucking foul! Oh, mate. Oh. What are you doing? Hey, mate, if you can't see that, there's no point being there. You are joking me. Why is Alfie Rutherford just standing there? That free kick issue is one thing, but it's nowhere near as bad as not getting a penalty. Deliver. Oh, handball! That's handball, folks! It's too far for Mark to be sure, but the replays are pretty conclusive. Forward only. Good Briggs. Mate. Mate, did you not see that foul, genuinely? That's handball as well. Was that what he gave it for? Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry. We're pretty sure he gave the high foots, not the foul on prior, but whatever. Shots off, mate. Oh, fucking hell. New winger Tom Blair was in a pretty good position there. Oh, that is a chance, and that's fucking the biggest handball going. Jason! Go on, Brixie! Oh, He's run into him, oh as if that's God. a fucking that's foul. Well. As if that's a foul. Briggsy! 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 Oh, Briggsy! Oh, you 
Hussein Osise gets United's first chance of the game, but he hits the side netting. This is not a game dripping in quality, but on the bright side, both teams are playing to win. The Fleet know as well as any team the influence that Jason Pryor can have on a game, and we suspect they've been briefed on how to try and manage him. That's a foul shit. How the fuck? They don't, they don't even know it's if they're free kick. That's how bad a decision Thanks, that was. They don't, they don't even know it's a free kick. Press it! Press it! Jason Pryor really is in the wars today. <laughs> Down him, eh? We're going to need to see Tony Edson's challenge on Pryor again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't even get a yellow. <laughs> He's getting kicked to fuck, fourth. Old school, mate, getting kicked to fuck. And the ref keeps giving fouls against him. You might as well get the fucking tea lady to fucking ref the game. As the half draws to a close, David Amu breaks down the right and gives Tony Edza the best chance of the match. George, oh. open up! Lucky there, by the way. And it is, and it's all come from being unlucky. Boys, have your breather. Settle down, say nothing. Right, relax. Really good off. Really good off, lads, yeah? This is where you need to really take your breather, okay? Minimal information needed. So just try and keep the ball moving out wide or around the corners. All they're doing is they're putting it out for throws. They're putting out for throws, they're putting out for corners, okay? So we're not gonna change our formation, right? I'll keep an eye on, on the fitness levels. You'll be surprised how far you can get through. The clock will be fucking Briggsy 10, 15 in before you know it, okay? All right, boys, so come out late, don't rush out, get your breathers, get your water, get your fluids. Great half, and you, you're just, at the moment, you're just a team boy, you're just a proper team at the moment, like a proper team, okay? All right, guys, keep at it. Mark thinks Ebb's fleet might be tiring, and having lost so heavily at the weekend, their confidence could easily, well, ebb away, especially if the hot dog comes on and ruffles a few feathers. I like using idioms for the record. Oh, what a war. The impressive Hayden Hollis continues to drive forwards from the Ebb's fleet overload at the back, hoping that his teammates can make the most of his surges. Oh, Harry, you and Sega keep warm, yeah? You and Sega keep warm, yeah? Hollis, however, is troubled with Harrison Mell's long kick, bounces through to Briggsy. It's end to end stuff as Cook and Hollis vie for a Defender of the Match award that just doesn't exist. He's done well there, by the way. He's playing He's not playing on side. Oh, oh man, that's a fucking... By the way, that's a fucking horrific challenge on fucking Josh. A foul on Josh Taylor goes unnoticed as McShane gets an opening that he takes just a bit too quickly. The first change sees Harry Ottaway come on for midfield maestro Aaron Cool. Well done, Kildy. Well done, mate. Well played. Go on, go on, go on. Oh, lads, two years. Go on, just try it, just try it. As we approach the hour mark, the game is still pretty open, and that's great news for a winger with the legs of Tom Blair. Knock it up, Cal! Cal, knock it up! Back stick! Back stick! Deliver! 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 
at your feet, you can do it. Good delivery as well. Attack culminates with Dan Gallagher lofting the ball to Jason Pryor. He heads back across to substitute Harry Ottaway just five minutes after his introduction. The hot dog then deftly glances the ball past the goalkeeper. That's what I was looking up the goalkeeper's name. Sorry, hang on. Got it here somewhere. Mark Cousins. Cap compact! Compact! That was a good header, by the way, from both of them. Two good headers. Yeah, from both no, of them. A really good header. The bench are looking to close the game up, assuming that they're sure what Ebsley are doing formation-wise. They're 3 5 two. No, back four, aren't they? Back four. Oh, they're 3 five. So we're going to go, we'll go 4-5-1, OK, yeah? Have you? A corner to Dorking might prove to be Ebsley's best weapon. Hayden Hollis powers forwards like Richard Rufus on his way to a pyramid scheme pitch meeting and the fleet attack down the Dorking right. Sit in H! Gotta get back to him! Yeah, he is fucked up, he's gonna have to dig in now. Oh my god, what It's hard to tell from this distance what happened there as we continue to pay our dues by not going anywhere near that half of the pitch or the pitch itself. Yeah. Fortunately, the GoPros can help us figure this out. <laughs> Blair Road! Blair! Tom! Well to that Very good! Oh, right, Tom! To the end, son, come on! The fleet are creating chances. Jesus Christ! Tom! You need to decide then. Listen to me! Sub Shaq Coulthurst has his second chance in as many minutes, but fails to convert on the one touch finish again. Go on, Blair! Go on, Blair! Go on, Sam! There it is! Yeah! Yes! The relentless Harry Ottaway then gives Dorkin their own chance. What a touch, Steve! He's open up with his right foot! Talking have made it to injury time in the fleet, or well, they're out of ideas. Corner, corner! Good lad, good decision! Good get up! Get up! up. And press! Get up and press! Yeah! That's the way I, 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 I like it. <laughs> Oi, can't, can't beat us. That's how it works. Well done. Well done, Kuli. Get in there! That is a fucking right, dream! Get in, boys! Sunshine! Yeah, I'm glad I'm out. At the moment, your shape is really good, your aggression's really good as well. Really, really good. But the bottom line is, yeah, like, you are fucking together right now, boys. It's fucking great. Really, really good. The management team have done a good job as well. You know, we knew when to full press them, we knew when to change shape. We've done it all spot on. The minute you full press that lot, no good. Can't win the duels. Can't get it into high areas. Simple as that. Don't give them a plus one, similar to Rochdale. So well done, boys. Literally fucking superb tonight. Really pleased. Well done. Cheers. Are we top yet? If you like the channel and you want to help us keep going, then you can join us on Patreon and YouTube memberships, where you get much longer episodes and loads of behind-the-scenes stuff.